Welcome to the SDA Housing Podcast, brought to you by NDIS Property Australia. Before starting this episode, we need to provide a general disclaimer. Information contained in this podcast is general in nature only. It does not take into account the objectives, financial situation, or needs of any particular person. You need to consider your financial situation and needs before making any decisions based on the information in this podcast. And you should consider seeking independent and professional advice for your personal circumstances. All right, let's begin. Hello, everybody. My name is Min, and I'm your host, your co-host with Debbie Kindness from the SDA Housing Podcast, a show that explains, highlights, guides, and brings awareness about all things SDA in this ever-changing and dearest world. Debbie, how are you? Hi, Min. I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Today, we're talking about single contract SDA options. So Debbie, you wanted to talk about this. Why is that? Well, this is really... In relation to SMSF purchases, we've talked quite a bit about this in the past and generally someone who comes with an SMSF self-managed super fund wants to purchase an SDA property in that they've either got two choices. They can do a two-part house and land package, which has to be converted to a single part contract, uh, which can be a, a very complex and expensive option or they can buy a single contract, which generally is going to be an apartment or a villa off the plan that is being sold as a single contract. Now, we are starting to work with a few different developers who have started offering a new option, which is a two-part house and land contract, but either they themselves own the block of land or they work with builders who may be willing to purchase that block of land in order to sell it as a single contract. And this is a much lower priced option than using one of the third party companies that will do that two part to one part conversion. Now, Debbie, this is um, a breath of fresh air, I guess, because there's not many people or groups providing uh, such options. But um, normally, can you go back to the whole expensive charging process just to show you? Compare the um, apples with apples, I guess, yeah. Yeah. So a regular two-part house and land contract, to make that conversion into a single contract that can be purchased within your SMSF if you're taking out finance, uh, it can add 25 30% to that sale price, which is significant. Why is it that much more expensive? You've got the, the third-party organization doing this, they have their lending costs, which are generally higher than the mortgage costs you would normally be paying. They've got all of their legal costs, other finance costs. They've got this two stamp duties. They're also taking the risk, uh, depending on how long the build is going to take, they've got all of their drawdown payments and loan repayments as that loan increases over the build construction time. And of course, they're taking their fee for it. It does end up being over and above the final price you would end up paying yourself, which is more than that house and land package uh, because you've got your stamp duties and your holding costs. Can I correct you there? there be, you said 25, 30%. No, the deposit is between 25 and 35%. Yes, the actual additional cost is around the 15 to 18%. No, right? it does end up being more, maybe at least 20. 20? Okay. Yeah. So you're saying to me that um, an 800 grand package becomes 960 at least, if okay. not if not two, if not a million. So, so the reality is, it's 20 percent additional costs and a 25 to 35 percent deposit to move forward with. Yeah. Okay. So if you if you're looking at doing something like that within your SMSF, you are looking at probably a 350 four hundred thousand dollar deposit paid, and you need a buffer. So you're looking at another hundred thousand. So you really do need up to half a million in your SMSF for this to be a comfortable, financial, feasible option. Okay, so going back to your original topic, these smaller developers or builders who may be able to do the odd one-part contract uh, sale because they are buying themselves, be it villas or a one-part house, I guess what's their rough cost they're adding to the the package, Debbie? Generally, they're adding about 60000 and that is going to be your stamp duty that you pay at, on a whole house rather than just on the land. 
it's going to be they're obviously buying the block of land, so they've got their interest costs and whatnot. But a sixty thousand dollar increase is is significantly less than a two hundred thousand dollar increase. But Debbie, it's sixty to seventy thousand increase, true, and then the deposit is only ten or twenty percent. Yeah. Now with it's with an SMSF, you have to pay twenty percent. Because, to, settle, to settle, yeah. Yeah, because you can't borrow more than 80%. But for the actual transaction to go unconditional, yep. it may only be 10%, but usually 20%. Yeah, yes. either. Yeah, so if it's only a 10%, then you still need to pay the extra 10% at settlement when, once you actually take out your loan. But yeah, I mean, that makes it a, a much simpler option, really. We don't have a lot of packages that fall into this category. But we, we do get them through from time to time, which is really appealing for some people, obviously, because instead of paying a 1.1, 1.2 million SMSF single part price on a contract that was converted from a two-part house and land, they might be able to get it for around about the million dollar mark. Or in some cases, we have had packages that are coming in at, at even 750, 800,000, depending on the, the status, I guess, of the developer or the, the builder, whether they've held that block of land for a long time or what they're... Or well, the size of the block. The size of the block being smaller, yeah. make it, making it a cheaper block. That's all, yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to bring this up because it's something I've started to, to speak to people more about in the recent few weeks who are looking at doing an investment in their SMSF. I would like to add a few more comments to this topic. As always, please seek independent financial advice. Uh, talk to your accountant, talk to your lawyer, because if no matter which which path you go, the um the the organisations, the majority of those organisations that which do add the the, the premium and the and request a bigger deposit de- payment down, there's going to be four layers of lawyers, Debbie. You got the vendors' lawyers, you got the third party lawyers, you got the lender the lenders' lawyers, and you got the SMSF lawyers. There's four layers of lawyers going back and forth. For this one transaction, that also adds a fair bit of money to the cost as well, but also confusion and complexity and delay. Now, Debbie, in recent months, you and I have been working on a handful of other clients, and we've seen how complex and delayed the process is. Do you want to um so so comparing apples with apples, right? One is sixty grand, seventy grand premium ad. One is twenty percent premium ad. One is 10, 20 percent deposit. Over here, it's you know, 30, 35%. This one here is much more simpler and faster. This one over here is much more slower. Do you want to go through our experience with the delay and slow process and how it could be very frustrating in this uh, other world of third-party engagements to wrap it up into one? Oh, look, yeah. Well, we actually were working on a sale, I think dating back to November, that was a two-part conversion. Uh, the... That, that, that was further complicated because it ended up the land purchase was a a nomination which the they would not accept. So we had to then find another block of land. This happened over Christmas period, so that complicated everything more. We literally didn't get that sale settled until, yeah. until March, mid late late early, March, early, no, early April. April. Four months. Four months, if not five months from the start of that process. Uh, And that was because of all the complexities that the third party company required and their finance requirements put onto all the different parts of this sale. So it's just, it can be a really slow, messy, very frustrating for everybody process. So be prepared for such a messy process. We'll get there, but it's it's slow process. In the background, we have the, the 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 selling agent, land agents who represents the vendor, screaming at us, going, "When's it, what's happening? What's happening? Why is it not settled here? Where's the finance approval? Where's the paperwork being signed?" It is a complex process. So, comparing the alternative, which, which is what Debbie's talking about here, or the simpler alternative, um, is cheaper, faster, and just less stress, I guess. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, whilst we don't, as I said, have a lot of these options, um, we're working with maybe two or three different developers or builders that can do this. So it's always worth considering that and talking to us about whether uh, any packages we have may have that option of the builder themselves, the developer themselves doing 
that as a single part contract. So always ask us and we'll see what we can do. And also another small small hiccup in the whole process, Debbie, is when the third parties do their vetting of the builders as well, Debbie. That also slows things down as well. Well, yeah, that's another thing. We have actually had sales fall over because when the third party did look at that particular builder, they said, well, we're not really comfortable with them. They take longer than we'd like. You know, it's potentially going to take more than 12 months, which we can't allow. And that could, we've had sales fall over because of that as well. So, um, and some areas, they don't go into certain areas for whatever reason. So yeah, there's so many, you know, hurdles, I guess, that have to be jumped. Remember this whole topic of superannuation, SMSF and NDIS, I just want to pull it back a little bit to the fundamentals here, Debbie, for our listeners to hear. This is a very complex topic. I mean, we know superannuation by itself is complex. And then you got SMSF superannuation is a further complex topic on its own right. And then you have the topic of NDIS over here, and that's a complex matter anyway by itself. And when you merge these, these two complex subject matters being NDIS and SMSF yeah. and super and lending and third parties and four or five lawyers, this is a very, very complex process. It's like playing a wedding. It's just impossible to achieve, right, sometimes. So it is very I, – I just – yeah, I, I pity those guys out there who are doing so many of these because, you know what, it is a complex process and – and look, my back, our backgrounds here, me and Debbie, have come from financial planning in financial advice in superannuation. And even we pull our hair out here just trying to do these transactions for our buyers. So when you are talking to an advisor or an agent or a, or a marketer or a spruker, just be mindful that this is not a race. This is a slow process because it is what it is. Four or five lawyers, seven, eight different um, eight people involved. And let's, let's go through this whole matter, right? You got the land developer, seller, the builder, the selling agent, the client, that's four, the client's lawyer, the vendor lawyer, the lender's lawyer, that's seven now, the accountant, eight, the financial advisor, who must give advice here, nine, right? So, and I'm sure there's someone else in between. It's probably 10 people four lawyers which are in there, going back and forth just to try and make this deal happen. And it's a very, very slow, complex, and expensive. I want to, I want to emphasize the word expensive, expensive process. So in the past, with me and Debbie, we've discussed, Debbie, what it costs that someone should have as a cash deposit to proceed with a NDIS purchase. Now, when you add that, that, that 400 grand figure, right, to the whole SMSF topic as well, as you said, 500 grand. So my advice, yeah, let me rephrase this. My informal generic advice is if you're looking at doing a normal house and land package for NDIS, 350 to 400 grand, please, is your, is your, is your benchmark number. You're doing SMSF with this, 500 grand. $500,000 is what you need inside Super SMSF as a cash balance to execute this transaction. And when I say 500 grand, that's just that's a comfortable buffer. Extra, extra amount of money to cover the furniture package, the provider fees, the variations. Vacancy. Vacancy, everything. Half a million in super. So if anyone's telling you to do an SMSF NDIS house with 200 grand, nope. 300, nope. 350 is the, yeah, maybe. It's a maybe there. Minimum 350, ideally safe, 500 grand in super anyway. Unless you come across, as Debbie says, an alternative product service, which is a builder or developer who actually is doing the one-part contracts on his own product on land anyway. So yes, that's a different scenario. Okay. Debbie, I think we've covered here enough on this matter. Any final words of advice? Yeah, I guess, look, you know, it takes a lot of getting your head around how the whole SMSF thing works. So talk to people, talk to your financial advisor, as Min said. Ask your marketing organization, what different options they have. And just be aware that this is another option as well to look at. We we have people that want to do this, but they definitely do not want to buy an apartment. Fair enough. That's that's what you want. But but you're paying a premium. Yeah. But but there is this house and land option occasionally, potentially. 
my final words of advice to anyone listening to this podcast is do not take financial advice from a financial planner or financial advisor who is also selling you this package. Because there is a conflict of interest here. They can't give you unbiased advice if they're also selling, selling the package to you and making a very large sum of money on the side, under the table, okay? Do not buy from a financial advisor who is also giving you financial advice. There's definitely a conflict of interest there and you don't want to be caught out where they're doing the wrong thing by you. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Debbie, thank you so much for your time and we'll end up now. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure you are subscribed and following us so you can keep in the loop with all of our upcoming episodes. We would really appreciate it if you could leave us a five-star rating, a written review, and to share this podcast with those that could benefit. Until next time, catch you on the next episode.